94.3 The Dude is very grateful to our men and women in uniform. We're proud to recognize local members of our military by turning the spotlight on them right now in our soldier salute. Thank you to the General's Hot Sauce for providing their triple threat three-pack of sauce to this week's featured soldier. Veteran-owned, South Carolina grown. GeneralsHotSauce.com. I'm your host, Ethan James, and today we're going to be talking to United States Army veteran and veteran of the World War II Battle of the Bulge, Gerald White. Mr. White, when you joined the United States Army, you knew that it was a time of war, and you knew that you were going to war. You took a ship to go fight in World War II. Tell me about that ship ride. Everybody knew what they were going into. Tell me about the mentality and the thoughts going through you and your fellow soldiers' heads. Well, we, we know that uh, we was going to be replacements for the ones that was wounded and killed. We, we knew that, but we didn't know what we was going to be assigned to. We know we was all infantry, but we didn't know what we would be. I mean, we had basic training as infantry people, so we knew that we was going to be in, up in the line. Everyone was saying, well, we, we hope that we make it through a few days before getting wounded. We had to face reality. Mr. White, you took a ship over to Europe to go fight in World War II. Tell me about the first actions that you saw, that moment where it finally hit you, we're here, this is war, it's time to fight. When we left England, we were ferried across to uh, France, and then we was all placed on 40 by 8 rail cars, and then we proceeded to the front lines, and I know the When we got to Belgium, I knew that because the train started to slow down, so we knew that we was apparently getting close to the line. We could hear artillery in the background. Mm -hmm. By this time, there was all kinds of vehicles there to pick up, especially trucks with to pick up people. So when they called my name, I went and got in this vehicle. And, of course, I was a little guy. I only weighed about 145 pounds. So I figured, well, I can't carry one of those big M1 rifles. So I ended up with a carbine. We all got in this truck and we started forward. And as we went further and further, we could hear the artillery. Thank you to Resource Financial Services for providing an Orca tumbler for this week's featured soldier. Proud to offer military personnel zero lender fee mortgages. ResourceVALoans.com. Mr. White, you told me you're married. How long have you and your wife been married? I've been married for 67 years. You've been married for 67 years. That is incredible. Tell me about your wife. Tell me about when you guys met. We met at the Hornet Temple, Seneca Army Temple, at Ramos, New York. She was working there. Of course, I was in the surveillance organization. When I found out that there was a school available to go to be an ammunition inspector, I think I was there about six months. This other inspector, for about a year, he said, well, you just got out of college. You should have no problem going to this school for six months at Savannah. And I said, what do I do to get in this program? He said, well, I'll help you. I said, well, it's paperwork. And then in 1953, they sent me to Savannah to the school. Completed that course. This is when I met my wife. Depot. After, I guess we went together for about a year, and we decided to get married. Mr. White, after all the time you spent in Europe during World War II, tell me about coming home back to the States. Well, that was great, because the whole division uh, moved out of Pilsen, Czechoslovakia. We came to the port in France, and every uh, unit from the division was moved as a unit. And they sent us back to Fort Dix, and then they let us all go on leave. Matter of fact, VJ Day in August, I was at home on leave. Talk about happy, happy times. Mr. White, you're a survivor of the Battle of the Bulge, a very famous battle of World War II. I know it's a tough thing to talk about such tragedy and hardship, but tell us what you can about your time during the Battle of the Bulge. Well, that was, uh, it was fierce. You can't believe there was times when the, the earth would just rumble from both sides. Everything from small arms all the way up to the heavy artillery. And there'd be times you just can't 
fan of them. What was going on, you felt, I'm going to be lucky that I don't get wounded or get killed in this. Really, in that battle, about 19,000 Americans killed, and there was over 100,000 Germans killed in that battle. We're, we were in God's hands, believe me, I'll tell you. Amazing to go through some of the films and the stories that people tell of what happened there. Mr. White, when you talk about the Battle of the Bulge, everybody immediately thinks about the cold weather, the really bad winter that the Battle of the Bulge took place in. Tell me about that cold winter. Well, you really, you, you had to keep moving or you would probably froze your, your hands and feet. And what a lot of them did was when they was close to pine trees, they would cut the limbs off pine trees and put pine trees over them. Not only that, but tell some for if we did have artillery come close to you, would go into the trees before it hit you. But you'd be surprised how much a pine tree over the top of you warms you up. Thanks for joining us in our Soldier Salute, presented by Little Pig's Barbecue, serving Columbia since 1963 with that bodacious buffet, and Palmetto State Armory, American-made for life, and Franklin Equipment, rent, buy, rely, and Atkins Law Firm Workers' Comp Attorneys, who you hire matters.